Okay, I guess we're live. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I am Bob Zuckerman. I am the president of downtown New Jersey. And uh, I actually wear a number of hats. I'm also executive director of the Downtown Westfield Corporation, one of the many special improvement districts in New Jersey. And I'm a small business owner, and I'm also an elected um, trustee in uh, South Orange Village. But I come to you today through my Downtown New Jersey hat, and I want to welcome everybody to uh, today's um, forum on liquor license reform. It's uh, long overdue, I think. And we have a lot of great people who I'll all introduce you to the panel uh, just very shortly. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about downtown New Jersey for those of you who don't know. Um, we're a member supported education and advocacy organization uh, working around revitalizing our central business districts and our downtowns around the state. Uh, we help our members through regular workshops, an annual conference, uh, periodic networking events. Hopefully in 2021, we'll be able to return to live networking events and not just on Zoom. Uh, and we provide a lot of topical content about all the issues facing downtowns and uh, here, here in the state. Um, we have an annual conference coming up on January 19th through 22nd, through the 22nd with some great panelists and some great sessions. So please go to our website at downtownnj.com to sign up for those. And um, also when you're at the website, you can uh, search for our Liquor License Reform Alliance. If you're interested in this issue as you probably all are since you're on the Zoom, um, we would really encourage you to, uh, to support the efforts for reform by going, uh, becoming a member of the Liquor License Reform Alliance, which we have started. Um, I've been involved in this issue for a number of years. Before I was here in Westfield, I was actually the director in South Orange at the South Orange Village Center Alliance. But before that, I was executive director in Manhattan at the Lower East Side bid. And uh, why I became so interested in this issue is the liquor licenses and liquor rules are so completely different in New York City, just over the Hudson River, as they, than they are here in New Jersey. Um, in fact, in my neighborhood, in the Lower East Side, where, where I was, a, a lot of people, a lot of residents actually complained that there were too many liquor licenses. Um, I don't hear that, uh, that complaint very often here in New Jersey. So uh, I'm really interested in, in hearing from our panelists on this issue. And now I'm going to, um, it's my pleasure to introduce them to you. Um, we'll start off with uh, Senator uh, Vin Gopal. Uh, Sen the Senator's a lifetime, a lifelong resident of Monmouth County, born at Jersey Shore Medical Center, Neptune and raised in Freehold. Um, he's proud to be a small business owner himself, having built his business from the ground up, now with 14 employees. Senator Gopal, along with the fellow panelists, uh, Assemblyman Bergen, has introduced legislation that would enable a broader range of establishments to offer beer, wine, and cider through a special permit. So we welcome Senator Gopal. Uh, Assemblyman Berg, Brian Bergen, who I just mentioned, is a combat veteran, having served in the US Army for eight years after graduating from the US Military Academy at West Point. He is also a small business owner and an active volunteer in his home community of Denville in Morris County. Uh, Denville's a beautiful downtown, I've been there myself, that would benefit from liquor license reform to help their small businesses. Uh, we're also joined by Assembly uh, Deputy Speaker John Versicelli, who is a lifelong resident of New Jersey growing up in Paulsboro, uh, that's down in South Jersey, for those of you who don't know, uh, where he was formerly mayor and is managing partner of a business in town. So you're seeing a common theme here. Uh, the Deputy Speaker has, has been a strong advocate for liquor license reform for a number of years now. Uh, his, latest his latest legislation would allow the service of alcoholic beverages with a special restricted a restaurant permit. And uh, the Assemblyman's been on a number of panels that I've moderated over the last several years. We welcome you, Assemblyman, as well. Um, joining, the joining these uh, legislators is Mayor Shelley Brindle, uh, who was elected in November 2017 as the first female mayor in Westfield's history. Go Shelley. I have the pleasure of working with Shelley every day here in Westfield. Um, but prior to being elected, uh, Shelley served as HBO's Executive Vice President, Domestic Network Distribution and Marketing, where she was responsible for the revenue, marketing, and distribution strategy of HBO's $4.4 billion domestic subscription business. In other words, she was a big deal uh, at HBO. <laughs> uh, but she retired in 2016 from HBO to pursue public service. 
And uh, uh, the bio says the mayor is a strong advocate for Westfield's downtown and small business community. I can vouch for that firsthand. <laughs> so welcome, Mayor Brindle. And uh, what would a discussion about liquor license reform be without someone who was actually a restaurateur and who was affected by this? Um, and he happens to be a friend of mine as well. And that is George Constantino. George uh, is a very successful restaurateur with several restaurants under the Mil Gustos Hospitality Group. Uh, he owns three restaurants in Park Slope, which is my where I used to live several years ago. They're fabulous. They all have liquor licenses. But he also opened uh, Miti Miti in, uh, in downtown South Orange. That does not have a li liquor license, but um, still offers great food. Uh, George can actually provide a more unique perspective comparing New York to, and New Jersey's relative practices related to the sale of alcohol in restaurants. And finally, as ma moderator of the panel, we are welcoming Anthony Pizzatilli, uh, Pizzatillo, founder and principal of Pizzatillo uh, Public Affairs, a boutique PR firm. Over the last 20 years, Anthony has established a reputation uh, in developing incentives to enhance economic development in New Jersey. And he's been engaged in liquor license reform for the last six years. So again, I want to thank all of our panelists. Um, just a quick reminder, you can use the chat feature on the bottom of your screen to ask questions, which there will be time for Q&A towards the end of the session after we've heard from all the panelists. And now I will turn it over to Anthony. Anthony, it's all yours. Thank you, Bob. Uh, greetings, uh, everyone, and to the panel. Um, I think it's important for me to get one housekeeping uh, uh, measure uh, out, uh, according to Courtney, is that um, we're pretty tight with time. This is an hour uh, program, and uh, the panel have about 30 to 35 minutes uh, to discuss this important issue. I know it's, it's, it's really a small amount of time, given the fact uh, that it's such an important issue and such a ripe issue in New Jersey. But uh, please be respectful uh, and keep your uh, answers pretty, pretty terse. Um, I'd like to start by saying that um, <clears throat> over the last 20 years, I've represented the commercial real estate industry in, in New Jersey. And about uh, a half a dozen years ago, uh, a member of NAIOP, which is the Commercial Real Estate Trade Association, uh, uh, approached me and the Public Affairs Committee as a member of the Public Affairs Committee, and that's George Jacobs, who is a, uh, a mixed-use developer of retail and uh, office and, and, and uh, uh, residential, uh, with an interesting um, study that uh, he further uh, went in depth with, uh, with regards to how uh, uh, the phenomena of small niche restaurants uh, were driving economic development, uh, not only in New Jersey, but across this country. And that we uh, as a state were behind and, and disadvantaged as a result of archaic post, uh, um, 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 uh, uh, essentially post, uh, oh, I forget the word I'm thinking of, but uh, that um, has existed for the last 75 years where uh, our, our law pro post prohibition, that's what I wanted to say, laws were established in New Jersey that strictly limited licensing. Uh, so um, uh, we were able to work with Assemblyman uh, Bersicelli. Uh, Ms. Uh, Assemblyman Bersicelli put together a rather uh, interesting, what we con consider to be respectful and incremental approach to uh, liquor license reform. And uh, we've been working with him ever since. Uh, as you can see in, uh, over the course of the last numbers of years, there have been several pieces of legislation introduced to tweak or reform liquor law reform. There seems to be a willingness in the legislature. And I'd like to start first with Assemblyman Bersicelli. Uh, John, why can't we get this done? And when can we, and, and what do you see uh, as the process for uh, uh, getting what is such a, a cry by not only uh, the business community and the restaurant community in this in this state, especially now during the pandemic, but but uh, as a as a way to enhance economic development and create and job creation in New Jersey. Well, first of all, uh, good afternoon to everybody, and I said hello to some of the panel before. My colleague uh, 
in the assembly, uh, Assemblyman Bergen and my colleague in the, on the Senate side, Senator Gopal and Senator, we welcome you to this, to this fray, by the way, because it's going to take, it's going to take a real hand uh, of, 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 of uh, diplomatic um, uh, approach to this. You know, the, the, Tony, you asked what, what the single impediment is. There, there are a lot of good ideas floating around. The one thing that everyone recognizes in the main is that our liquor licenses, uh, the, our, li our liquor license rules are not working. They're from a different time. They were designed to protect the public interest when shot and beer joints were on every corner. I mean, I live in a, a town two square miles, population now of 6,000 people. When the new laws came into effect after prohibition, there were 28 liquor licenses here. There were, and only recently were there, were there more churches than liquor licenses as people went out of business. So what we know today is that liquor does not work as a standalone business. It really has to be associated with food. And what we're fur further learning is retail is changing, that food is the future with regards to smaller, particularly smaller retail spaces in New Jersey's older downtowns. And New Jersey is loaded with older downtowns because just the nature of our state. So the governor's office has said, let's get something done. Uh, assembly leadership <laughs> has said, let's get something done. And I've had you know, it, the ability, when I say I, I have believed for the last four years that we've had 41 votes in the assembly. And the Senate, and of course the Senate president is not only my colleague, he's my friend, he's my legislative partner. And we have been together, not in the biblical sense, in the legislative and, uh, and, and political sense for a very long time. Uh, you know, he raises a few concerns and has given direction as to what he is looking for to get this balanced out in some respect. So the hurdles remain as follows, and it's very simple. There is a concern among, I would say many, that uh, those existing license holders should have some degree of protection in their value, if at all possible. That's one thing. The second thing is, which I think is a lesser of an issue, is that by allowing more licenses, and in my case, my bill, which calls them permits, and, uh, and, and also takes a step and reduces the 3,000 population down to 2,000 for a classic C license, uh, that, um, that, that you know, the, 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 the competition from these lesser expensive permits will place them at a competitive disadvantage. Frankly, I don't see that as that is really being the main, case, the main issue here. I think the main issue is the existing license holders have always been afraid that their value is going to be diminished. And that's why we put in place what we thought were reasonable protections within the structure of what the constitution would allow us to do. So uh, those negotiations have to be have to be completed in some respect. And uh, I've asked our leadership to move this to the front burner as recently as two days ago. Uh, and, um, and I know that uh, Senator Gopal has sat with the Senate president. He'll give us updates, I suspect, on where he thinks the Senate can be. Uh, and I'm going to continue with the Senate president as we try to put the pieces together. So right now, the simple thing, it's not a complicated formula. It's 21 in, in, in the Senate, it's 41 in the Assembly, and it's the governor's signature. So that's the mechanics we have to deal with. So as we all think about this, just know that there's going to be a, has to be a balance of fairness. By the way, this has got to be the only, the only business we have in New Jersey that's protected by the state as far as the field of competition. When I managed, when I owned local movie theaters, not, not a chain, I had two of them, I got run out of business by AMC when they came in with an eightplex. Nobody protected me and said, by the way, the eightplex can't come because the guy's over there. But the liquor, the liquor is a different thing. And uh, it's just one of those, it's one of those legacy issues that, uh, that we created in New Jersey because it got away. And let me add this before I pass on to the others. Uh, in the, uh, as we discussed the legalization, not the legalization, the uh, how we're going to do recreational marijuana, we've been very careful to make sure that the license we're granting are not going to be transferable. So we don't recreate this liquor license problem with the recreational marijuana issue. So that lesson, this lesson has been learned. Now the question is, how do we, how do we go back and get it back? And, I, and I'm sorry, I'll close on this. We actually looked at buying every existing liquor C license in the state and then reissuing them a new license equal to the C license to start fresh. Uh, that number, of course, uh, was, was, was pretty high. Interesting. Uh, Although now, frankly, it's going to be down. All these licenses are less valuable today, which will be the other side of the argument against, this, against us moving, because now this group is going to claim, now you're kicking us while we're down. We can't make a living as it is. And now you want to introduce all this new competition. We're shut down since March. So this is the, the you know, we had to be pragmatic about this stuff. And, um, you know, what we end up with here, if we can get a half a loaf of something, I would say it's going to be a very significant step. And I am optimistic that we can get a half a loaf, if not better. And let me also compliment George Jacobs. I don't see him on a screen. You know, George, George, and I say this only because George, Anthony, and a few others 
you know, have just been very, very, not only helpful, but reasonable when we structured the original bill in the assembly, which by the way, got very good marks uh, in public commentary as being, as being a good step. Uh, so I, I, think, I think the, my bill in the assembly, and I'll say it because it's mine, it's a lot of people's work. I think, I think that maintains to be our starting point. Uh, and uh, and I, think, I think whatever we end up with, you'll see a lot of that survive. Tony, thank, thank, th thank you, Assemblyman. Is the Senator on? Is Senator Gopal on? Yes. Hey, Anthony. How Excellent. You hey, how are you, Senator? Senator Gopal, um, you uh, have taken on uh, a leading role in the Senate uh, on liquor law reform, uh, not only with a leading piece of legislation that establishes permits for specific types of uh, uses as uh, and, and, and comparable, similar to uh, the Assemblyman's bill, but a multitude of other uh, uh, tweaks to the liquor law reform, just to open it up to allow for opportunities with regards to seasonal licensing and, and, and other avenues uh, that is specific seat, uh, that, to uh, Monmouth County. Um, you heard John, you heard the Assemblyman, uh, what, what's your feeling? Uh, is, are we going to get something done here? Um, um, uh, are, is the Senate willing to work with the Assembly to get something done? And, go ahead, sir. Sure. So, look, the, I think the Assemblyman said everything uh, pretty, pretty much on it. He's been on this issue since day one. In fact, my last call with the Senate president, he's like, you're getting as bad as Bersicelli now. So I got about nine <laughs> years to catch up on him. But uh, you know, he has been uh, he has been championing this since day one. Uh, and now I think because of his work and, and as you said, Anthony, there are hundreds of bills on there uh, out there. Um, and I think every time somebody puts a bill out, like when Assemblyman Bergen and I put a bill out, it gets a lot of press, it gets coverage, it brings attention to the issue. At the end of the day, this is going to be uh, uh, spearheaded by Chairman Versicelli and hopefully a lot of other people are going to be helping to to make this a reality. Um, you know, the, the concern, uh, I think, from the Senate president, which is a fair one, is how do we compensate these license holders? I, I've got folks like Bar Anticipation and DJs and a lot of other folks here who paid millions of dollars for their licenses. So, um, you know, one thing, if, if, you, if you are a establishment that's just afraid of competition, I have less sympathy. If you're a uh, establishment that truly believes in fairness, then I think that that is a fair point that needs to be uh, addressed. Uh, we know uh, from, from Mayor Brindle, who's been incredible in so many other downtowns. Uh, my, my district, actually, Monmouth County, has more downtowns than any other district in the state with Friel Borough and Asbury Park and Ocean Grove, Red Bank, etc. And they are struggling right now uh, because of, of COVID-19. So I think that uh, we will get there. I've had conversations with, with uh, Director Graziano, who's been outstanding, been very receptive. I think he, without putting words in his mouth, I hope and understand and believe the ABC knows that these liquor laws in New Jersey are incredibly archaic. Um, and uh, obviously the, the chairman just spoke on the, on, on the assembly side, but I think everybody, there are willing partners on, on all sides to figure out how to get this done. Whether that looks like a, a beer and wine license where you have to have food or looks something broader, I think that remains to be determined or whether it's a version of tax credits, how we pay these uh, folks back. And I think it's, the time is happening where we're having really strong deliberate conversations uh, and, and multiple legislators now, uh, you know, bipartisan assembly in Bergen here, and it's, it's not a Democrat Republican issue, bipartisan, we're starting to, to really nag and push leadership in both houses as well as the governor's office on saying this needs to get done ASAP. We can't wait any longer. We can't keep having the same conversations. We have to get something done. So I think we're gonna get there. The question is, is what version it is, but I know uh, the three legislators here are all focused on trying to get something done as soon as possible. Uh, and as, as Chairman Bercelli said, what that looks like, whether it's a compromise version, what it may be, as long as we get something done, I think that's important and we can help some of these downtowns. Thank you. Very, very encouraging, Senator. Thank you very much. And a very good point that you made uh, that uh, leads me to Assemblyman Bergen is, is, is a, bar, a bipartisan expression uh, with the sponsorship on the Assembly side of, of your legislation. Assemblyman, uh, talk about that. Um, tell me what your caucus thinks about that action. Uh, is, 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 is this, is this going to polarize uh, 
uh, parties? Is this issue gonna polarize issues or do you see support in your caucus for your initiative or some type of reform, sir? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. And, and I'm just honored to be here with Senator Gopal and Senator Berticelli, uh, who really are the leaders of this, this issue. Um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm happy to tag along and add my energy. As, as Chairman Berticelli knows, I, I, I do like to talk and get pretty passionate about things. Uh, so this is a topic that I decided I'm going to I'm going to take on. Um, and so the answer to the question is, I don't think this is a partisan issue at all. Uh, I, I think I think it's a it's a common sense issue or liquor um, license laws in New Jersey. They're ridiculous. Anybody who doesn't think that um, is insane. I mean, they are ridiculous. Even the people who, who own liquor licenses and benefit today. They know they're ridiculous too. So I think it's uniformly said that our, our laws are bad and the way we do things is not good. It's just how we get from here to there. That's the problem. And the Re Republican caucus, I can't speak for all of them today uh, and they'd be probably mad at me if I did, but um, I'm sure that most of them are just concerned about protecting business owners and making sure that we don't uh, disenfranchise the people who, who did this. Because let's keep in mind, uh, the people who bought these liquor licenses, a lot of them, this was their, this is their retirement plan. So they, they have been in their restaurants working for a year or bars for years and years and years. And this has been their 401k that they planned on cashing in at at some point. So that's a lot to take away from somebody. And as long as we preserve the, and protect those people, I think it would be insane for this to so be at all partisan. So Assemblyman, so you're saying that uh, existing license holders are, uh, should be entitled? Is that what you're saying? Well, I don't know if entitled is the right word, but they've been operating under a, under a, um, a certain set of rules for quite okay. some time. Okay. And they've, they've been playing within those rules and, uh, and have made investments that they, you know, again, it's their sure. investment portfolio. So I think it's only fair to protect that to a certain degree. And uh, the way that we do that is to make sure that when we add things that we offset what we're taking away from them in this regard, like in the in uh, Senator Gopal's bill and, and my bill, uh, it calls for tax credits, which I think is a good thing. So, uh, Simon Berticelli mentioned before, um, buying them all back. I actually love that idea. I got to tell you, I love that idea because we borrow money in this state for all kinds of stuff that, in my opinion, makes no sense. If we borrowed money and bought all the liquor licenses in the state back, put them back on the street, it became re recurring revenue. Everybody who's a business owner knows recurring revenue is the best kind of revenue, and we can make that money back tenfold over time or more. Um, so there's so many good ideas out there. It's a nonpartisan issue. We just have to make sure that the people who have been operating under this set of rules are not, you know, totally screwed for lack of a better word at the end of the day here. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Mayor, Mayor um, Brindle of West, uh, Westfield, here we are. Uh, you heard a lot today uh, and, uh, and, and some of it, and, and I think is very encouraging. Tell me what uh, liquor law reform would do for your downtown. Um, I mean, it's pretty significant, and I do want to thank everybody for their leadership on this. And in particular, I think after I was elected, one of the first and only seminars I attended was one on liquor license reform with Assemblyman uh, Berzicelli, and I think it was with the mayor of Collingswood. And I remember he was talking about the concessionaire's license that they had figured out as a way to add liquor licenses to their town. And so that has stuck with me, and we've been doing the same thing. And you know, our downtown was hurting prior to COVID just because of the transition from, you know, online to what uh, the live work play environment of downtowns today. So COVID is now just kind of another dagger in the heart. And, um, and we were actually, I mean, we've been doing backflips to look at even purchasing property for the sole purpose of being able to put a concessionaire liquor license in there as an economic development driver wow. of our town. Now that's crazy. Like we don't wanna be in the business of owning real estate, but our liquor license laws are forcing us to make crazy, really not really good taxpayer decisions, but ones that are really in terms of desperation to drive economic development for our community. So I, I'm highly encouraged by, by what I'm hearing today. And I know when I saw read about Senator Gopal's legislation, I immediately reached out to him. I said, how many bipartisan mayors do you need to jump on this and support it? Because I can tell you, and I can't speak for everybody, but I can speak for a lot that uh, it would be well, well re regarded and supported across the state now more than ever. 
And I certainly hope I'll just add that one thing that they could consider is I hope that we're going to give uh, loosen up some of the restrictions that we put around these craft breweries that have opened up too. that, uh, you know, we get we are generous enough to let them open, but actually then strap them enough to make it very difficult for them to succeed. And they've also become economic development drivers for our town. So I can't stress enough the importance to our communities from an economic development perspective for making this happen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now we actually have a, a business owner uh, on the panel, uh, George Constantino. George, where are you? Um, hey, hey, how are you? Good. You heard a lot here. Um, uh, you know, George, uh, I, I think you're probably the most valuable person on the panel, respectfully, in a sense that, you know, not only do you have a restaurant in, in, in South Orange, but you also own in, in Brooklyn, correct? Correct. Yeah. And, and so maybe you can just talk about uh, what you've been hearing, what goes on in New Jersey, and how and dispel that by by actual reality in 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 New York City. Sure, sure. Thank you, everyone, for your leadership and having me on this uh, very important panel uh, for small business improvement. Um, I own three restaurants in in Park Slope, Brooklyn. Three full service restaurants. They all have liquor licenses. Uh, the liquor licenses cost me four thousand dollars every two years. Um, I moved to New Jersey. My husband and I, we own the restaurants together. We moved to New Jersey five years ago. And once I heard of the liquor license laws here, I was like, I'm not opening anything up in Jersey. I'll stick with, you know, commuting to Brooklyn, open up another place there. Um, you know, sure enough, never say never. You know, I opened up something in Jersey, but the liquor license are really cost prohibitive. In my town alone, they're upwards of three hundred to five hundred thousand dollars. And, you know, that's money that a business really can't shell out unless you're going to put your house against your business, take out more debt. And in the beginning, you know, you can't do that. So when you compare four thousand dollars for a two year license, versus 300 to 500,000 in New Jersey. That's really cost prohibitive. Um, also in my experience, I find that I'm not getting, um, I'm losing a lot of talent, uh, meaning servers don't wanna work for a restaurant that doesn't have a liquor license, or they may even go to commute in the city. You know, So there's a lot of great talent, New Jersey great talent that we're losing you know, to other restaurants even outside of New Jersey. Uh, also a downtown right now my downtown I believe has two dormant liquor licenses so uh, downtown South Orange is not as attractive as a town that may have five or six full service liquor licenses going. So what happens when those liquor licenses lay dormant for a couple of years, you know, waiting for someone to buy that. Um, also, you know, like in my situation, you know, I almost didn't open up a business here. How many other um, restaurateurs live in New Jersey that are not going to open up because they can't have a liquor license? Uh, we're in the food and beverage business. And if I can only sell 50% of my product here, it's not the best that I can offer. Um, I also believe by changing these laws, competition is good, you know, and I think competition really just helps everyone stay on top of their game and just improve a product. And in the end, the customer wins out, the employee wins out, and the downtown wins out. You know, so I, I, I actually am really pleased to hear that this conversation is happening. You know, it is long overdue. The laws are very archaic, but this is definitely a win-win for everyone. And especially now during COVID, you know, it's really, really hard to run a business. Um, you know, people are scared of indoor dining. People are scared. But, you know, imagine you could actually deliver some, you know, whether it's a bottle of wine or a frosé or, you know, draft beer. You know, that really will help struggling uh, restaurants out there. Yeah. Yeah. Um... You know, um, uh, George, a lot of the opposition uh, over the years uh, have come forth uh, and stated that, um, you know, it, it's just not sustainable to have uh, entities such as bars and restaurants with liquor licenses uh, in, in any type of critical mass downtown so close to each other, uh, they would compete with each other and, and that would lead to to devaluations and, and potentially closings. Mm -hmm. uh, have you seen that? I mean, uh, in, 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 in Brooklyn or, or uh, yeah. is that an issue? No, I'd say not at all. I mean, competition, I think, brings more competition and increase of business. Um, you know, I have three restaurants pretty much on the same block in Brooklyn. And I'd say in a 10 block radius, there must be 75 restaurants. You know, and obviously before COVID, you know, they're all were doing well, but I really feel br business brings more business. Restaurants bring more business. Like if you're on your way to one restaurant, you see six other happening restaurants, you're going to now stay in that downtown, you know, um, and I, I feel like 
I think that's maybe an old school way of thinking that competition, you know, really kills business. And I disagree, you know, and also a lot of um, city folks are moving to New Jersey and they want these amenities, you know, so the landscape is changing, you know, less and less people are really cooking at home. You know, you know, people are buying these houses with great kitchens, but people still want to go out to eat and enjoy, you know, and that's, you know, and, and especially I'd say even during COVID, you know, when there was outdoor dining, you know, happening before the weather changed, people, that was one thing they could look forward to, outdoor dining, you know, movies are, you know, limited, other concerts are gone. So I really think, you know, people look at restaurants, but more competition, you know, I think is great for all business. Uh, I throw this out to um, uh, the the elected. Um, um, uh, you just heard what George stated. Um, you know, uh, multiple multiple critical mass licenses in a downtown creates walkability and it, and it creates and and it, and it creates additional business uh, opportunities. How do we change that culture? How do we get? the opposition or even your, your colleagues in the legislature to understand that that, that brings, that actually encourages economic development and growth rather than dispels it. One, any one of you, please. I would say uh, Bourbon Street's a pretty good example that competition, uh, it can be, can be healthy and, and people uh, bus like businesses in one place draws people because, you know, George's restaurant's only going to have so many seats anyway. So if it's Saturday night and people are trying to get to his place and he's fortunate to be loaded up, there's a place next door they're going to go. So uh, points all made are, 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 have been thoroughly discussed and those cases uh, are strong with respect to business can't survive without every stream of revenue that can possibly be available to it. Brian touched on it. You know, when a guy sits down and orders, I don't mean to be gender specific, when a person sits down to order an entree, very good possibility on many occasions there's more profit in the martini than there is in the entree so when you deny a business the ability to serve that additional that additional piece of the puzzle uh you're you're denying them you're denying them commerce i've said by the way and i've said it publicly i'm surprised there hasn't been a class action suit against the state of new jersey for restraint of trade uh and it may be ripe to take that up and if the legislature can't get it get itself together and i'm not talking about the people on this call but if we can't get this thing moved I mean, look, we had, we had to go to the Constitution on recreational marijuana because the legislature couldn't come to an agreement. We can't come to an agreement at some point. There may have to be relief uh, sought in the court process because if I'm a business and I, my chance of success is limited by laws that no longer can be justified to protect the public interest, now my trade is being restrained. Uh, I'm not an attorney. I'm a lawmaker. But uh, you know, I, you know, th there may be a couple of angles that some some pressure has to be brought here. Um, not suggesting that the court should legislate, but uh, you know, that uh, this is going to have we have to break this thing loose at some point. We're close to doing it, but uh, you know, we, we may have to take a different approach. Senator or Assemblyman, would you like to comment? Yeah, I, I will. I, I I couldn't agree more with what the Assemblyman said. I mean, competition is fantastic. It not only uh, uh, helps the businesses there, but helps them get better because they're competing with each other. It just makes everything so much better. And to answer your question about how what what we can do, you know, um, I say take a look at the legislators who don't uh, who don't support this kind of thing and are and are and are pushing back on it. And I always say that there should be a prerequisite to be in the state assembly or, or Senate that you should have at least have run a lemonade stand in your life. That way you can understand somewhat, you know, the, the perplexity of business and how things work. Look, competition is fantastic, it is what we need. And it never is a bad thing. It's always a good thing. So we need to do what we can. But again, I caveat everything I say with, we need to do this, create this opportunity for for competition, loosen up the laws, but we do have to build in to some degree um, something for the people who have been playing by the rules for so long and have this asset that, you know, that they paid for and worked for. Senator. Uh, yeah, I just agree with both of the assembly members. Listen, I, I, I think there's an education piece to it. Uh, there's a lot of mayors and council people on here and it's important that you educate your legislators. When I got to the Senate, Three years ago, uh, I didn't know much about this issue. The councilwoman in Spring Lake, Sid Wally, who nagged me to death every three days educating me. I learned a lot about this issue. And then all of a sudden, other towns did the same thing. And I'm hearing from Red Bank and I'm hearing from Asbury Park. I think it's up to all the towns on here. Pass resolutions in your town demanding that you want liquor license reform now. If we can get 
hundreds of towns across the state passing those resolutions and making sure you reach out to your legislators, not just sending them a letter, but every conversation you're having with your senator and your assembly people say, hey, are you signed on to one of the liquor license bills? Are you signed on to any of them? What are you doing on it? I think this has to be a prime conversation. That's what's going to drive this. Uh, I think that's an excellent point with the league, uh, Assemblyman Versicelli. Yeah, I, I wanted to add something else too, because uh, Brian uh, is, you know, as you mentioned, to try, you know, you know we, we, and I offer this only because when you're in the, engaged in these sort of things, you have to take into consideration where the opposition is and where it's coming from. So this idea of protecting to some degree the equity of the license is a fair discussion to have. But I'm just going to say this to say it. No one protected the hardware store when Home Depot came and took them away. No one protected the movie theaters and no one protected the local clothing stores when Walmart came and took them away. Uh, they didn't have a state license uh, to hold on to, uh, to say there was some value. And no matter what we do here, the value of the existing C license is not gonna go to zero. In my proposal and in the Senator's proposal, uh, what we're proposing, the C license will still do more, be more valuable and be able to, the existing ones will be able to transact it as they presently are. Because I always remind people, when you see these big numbers that are, that are being transacted on a liquor license, that money's not going to the town. That's just the right to transfer. The license is still owned by the municipality, but the original purchase price is all the municipality got except the annual renewal that takes place. So the C license is not going to go to zero. So, you know, we're, we're at a given point, we're only gonna be able to do so much in compensation and collectively we have to decide how much we think is fair uh, because they're still going to have something of value, of greater value than the new, whatever we're going to issue new. They're still going to have their business and that they practice making their meatballs, they're still going to sell food. So, so you know, these are, these are the kind of discussions you get in uh, because, again, how much is fair? And we do have to be fair. It is reasonable to be fair if we can. But the other side is how much fairness is there for the business that opens that has a third less chance of being successful because it can't get access to a state issued license that is being issued under rules that went back to the 50s. And by the way, in my bill, and I think Vince too, I just, I don't, and I don't know Brian's to, to a great degree, uh, we, are, we are going to tack it, tackle this pocket license issue. And this, uh, this concessionaire's license is a scam, by the way. And Mayor, the hoops you're trying to jump through is because all, it's all you have at your disposal. Exactly. But, you know, it, 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 it's a, it, it, the concessionaire's license was not designed to do what it's, being, what it's doing. But with a nod, the ABC saying it's okay because the state apparatus recognizes that the, the selling of liquor, liquor by weir, wine, whatever that is, is going to be important because no one's opening shoe stores downtown. You got a chance of George opening a restaurant, nobody's going to open a shoe store. And George Jacobs was listening to this and he's pulling his hair out because, you know, he's got retail space, he's got to fill it up. He's got a better chance of getting a small restaurant in than he does of getting someone to open it. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and I agree with the assemblyman too. There's got to be balance. There, there's a there's a balance to be struck here, I think. And uh, I totally agree with everything the assemblyman said. You know, unfortunately, they've these folks have been operating under a set of rules, and that's why I think there has to be something done. You know, the person who saved up two hundred thousand dollars to buy a liquor license, you know, three years ago, and we can't just completely change the game on them, or we shouldn't. We can do it, but we shouldn't change the game on them without at least looking at, at the fact that they did that. That's all that I'm, I'm saying there. And and my bill, by the way, uh, Assemblyman, is just, I introduced the the assembly version of Senator Bill Powell's bill. And, and just, uh, uh, I was just gonna add is that yes. I completely agree with you, but I don't think that the consideration for the current license holders can come at the expense of those who are trying to open business or are suffering from current COVID as I think the Assemblyman articulated. And I'll just say uh, a, a couple of things. Couldn't agree, rising tide floats all boats. It's been proven over and over and over again. And I, I don't know why that's a conversation that we need to continue to have. And I think Senator Gopal's suggestion about a resolution for local municipalities to draft is a great one. And I would suggest that maybe downtown New Jersey and the league could actually create a draft of a resolution and circulate it to all the municipalities. And we will absolutely pass it pronto. And uh, so if, if maybe uh, Bob Zuckerman 
and could put that on a to-do list uh, to do that. And the other thing someone know about the concessionaire's license, I couldn't agree with you more. It's ridiculous that actually we have to go to those lengths because of the failure of the legislature, legislature, legislature to do their jobs. And so, uh, and that's kind of, but those are the workarounds we're so desperate to find for economic development to make happen. So, um, I, you know, you, I, I speak for a lot of mayors. We are begging, begging, begging for you have the courage to push this forward. Um, and, and with COVID and everything else, there's never gonna be a more appropriate time to make it happen than now. Yes, that, well stated. Um, uh, Courtney, are you, on the, are you on? Are we up against Q&A? Um, uh, yeah, you know what? This is, um, I don't know if my, I don't see myself. I thought I put my video on, but uh, yes, we're, we're, we're hitting into Q&A. Um, and by the way, thank you, Mayor Brindle, for, for mentioning the resolution. That to-do is done. It's up on our website, and I, I posted a link actually a, a little while ago on that. Um, but yeah, let's jump into some of the Q&A. And most of the Q&A is, well, first, I want, in case anybody wasn't seeing the chat, a lot of the chatter was you know, about how much comp comp uh, compensation and all that. And, and I think you guys already um, you know, they've already been writing down the cost of their liquor licenses and should they be fully compensated and all that. And, and this group seems to be slightly less sympathetic, uh, uh, to the cause, um, and more about let's, let's help our, our existing businesses. Um, but that said, uh, there was a lot of questions about, um, cause we know that Senator or, or Assemblyman Burgesselli's, uh, law includes liquor, whereas, uh, Senator Gopal and Assemblyman Bergens is only beer, wine, and um, and we know there are a lot of other pieces of legislation out there uh, with craft breweries and, and all that. And so I guess the question is, uh, you know, is this enough? One and and or are we looking at this incrementally? Let's get beer and wine and make that successful, and then move along. Or you know, what's the end game here? Um, when it comes to liquor license reform, because no matter what, even if you have these special permits, the existing law is still. Um, so, I don't know, Anthony. I leave it to you to 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 send that off to people. Sure, um, I, I I think um, um, I'm, I'm familiar with um, a number of pieces of legislation, um, and I do know that uh, Assemblyman Bersicelli's bill. Um, uh, still allows municipalities to control uh, through planning and zoning um, where uh, those permits would be established. Uh, so, the, so from his legislation, uh, local control is maintained. And I believe that's true also, Senator, in your legislation. I don't think you relinquish uh, any of that control. Um, and and, and it still has to be, it, it still has to follow um, uh, local zoning and planning. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, it's, it's, it's permissive to the town. Right. So, um, so it, it's not like we're going to see uh, quality of life issues affected, um, you know, and, and quite frankly, uh, I believe uh, the leading initiatives that we're talking about are, are really talking about service at the table, uh, at, the, at the restaurant table, not at the bar. So, um, so we're really talking about an incremental change that allows for only service uh, while you order your, your meal. So um, uh, I, 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 think, um, uh, I think that is a, a reasonable move. Uh, but then again, what Assemblyman Bergen stated, uh, and I think also uh, all the leading initiatives, I think are very respectful of uh, the existing license holders and the fact that, you know, if we're going to change the rules, we're, we're going to have to, in some way, uh, assist those who have played by the game and, and invested accordingly. Yeah, and if I, if I could just say one thing, too, in the uh, Senator Gopal and I's piece of legislation, you know, the type of license that it creates, there are a lot of places out there today who have the full-blown license and only use a, a portion of it. They only sell beer. So those establishments could theoretically sell it to somebody who's then is going to open a bar, a full blown bar Good and point. then get this license. It's going to cost them three, four, five thousand $5,000 a year. So there's opportunity there too. And we got to look at it from all angles, but 
you know, I just want to point out that, that that's a big opportunity. I go a lot of places. Uh, my uncle owns a restaurant in Hackensack and he sells beer and, and wine there, but has the full blown license. I'm sure he could offload that, take on the new thing and benefit there as well. Excellent point. I'd like, uh, uh, like to also just add, uh, Vin had made a point that I think, uh, and, and the mayor picked up on it, uh, but it, 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 can't, it can't be made strong enough. Uh, a, a voice rising up from every corner of the state will help leadership be more comfortable in the decisions that have to be made. Every legislative district, the people in every legislative district have to just move forward with a voice that says, we want something to change. Because stop and think about us being held hostage the numbers of liquor licenses that are, that are in existence and working that we're, that we're stumbling over to try and accommodate to bring forward this new economy uh, and, and, to, and to bring economic opportunity, particularly to the little person who has a chance to, uh, to get into a, a small restaurant business and have a chance of surviving. So this idea of a public voice getting engaged, I mean, look, that's how, that's how recreational marijuana got done. That's how same-sex marriage got done. That's how a number of these issues that other people thought could never happen got done. And so you, the public voice will be a big help to us um, uh, because again, if the legislature can't act, there's gonna be some other ways to go, whether it's through the ballot or, uh, or, or through the courts. And I think the courts would be a last resort. And I mentioned that earlier, uh, just because if, I'm only, if I own a business and the state is not letting me exercise my trade, uh, I think there's an argument there. So uh, the public voice by way of resolution, has been suggested, very good. Uh, but people calling, people calling their, uh, their, their elected officials, uh, people listen. Mary, you know you listen. Vin, you know you listen. I listen. Brian listens. Uh, Brian listens some of the time. But Brian listens, uh, and, uh, and, and we react. And so Brian, just, knows, uh, Brian knows my deep respect for him, so I'm allowed to say that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Just if I can add that to the assemblyman, uh, you know, if, if, if a town has a mayor uh, and uh, either join with a couple other mayors, join with a couple other business administrators, ask for a call with your three legislators, talk about it, say, can we follow up in 30 days, have four or five, reach out to your neighboring mayors and BAs who have downtown. And I think you got to keep the pressure and have those months. Don't just do one call with your legislator and then don't say, we are, can we schedule a follow-up 30 days from now to see what status has gone? You've got to put the pressure on. It's the only way it's going to rise up. And you know, another thing, maybe if, uh, if industry could help with this too, I just, this talk just came to me, but you know, restaurants are one of the businesses that fail the most, have the highest fail rate in the first couple of years. I, I, I think there's probably some data that we could pull together that would show that if they had this added capacity to serve beer, wine, liquor, um, uh, cider, whatever it might be, that their success rate might be higher because it diversifies the revenue like George was talking about earlier and uh, it gives them more opportunity. I don't know that to be a fact, but as a business guy myself, I would think there's probably some data to support that and that would help also. Yeah, I, if I could jump in, usually, you know, industry standards to sell food, you know, it's about 30% labor, 30% food costs, that's 60% going to expenses. Selling liquor, it's about maybe 5 to 10% labor and maybe about 10 to 15% on liquor costs. So you do the math, you know, it's 20, it costs you 25% to sell liquor and it costs you 60% to sell food. So definitely businesses are more profitable if they can sell, um, you know, alcohol. Yeah, and that could keep, uh, you know, another 10, 15, 20% of those junk restaurants afloat. Yeah, and also think if, you know, a new restaurateur has to shell out three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000 just for the liquor license, that doesn't even count furniture, you know, kitchen equipment, et cetera, to open, you know, so you're now turning, you know, two hundred dollars or 400000 which it should cost to open up a business, you're adding double that to add a liquor license. Yeah, and George, right. as you know, as a small business owner and Vin, Senator Gopal and, and Senator Bertuccelli, banks will only give you money when you don't need it. So uh, it's not gonna be there for you right away. Well, I, I, I wanna tell all of you, I've done my part uh, in, uh, in restaurants and consuming liquor to help drive the economy um, during both good times and these times of struggle. <laughs> Courtney, are you on the- Sure, that? yes, yes. Uh, I will tell you that my thing is spinning, so hopefully you can hear me. I can't really see much changing. Um, but uh, there was another, so there was a question and a suggestion. Um, could liquor license reform, particularly one of these, you know, when we're talking about beer and wine and table side, 
actually be tacked on to a COVID relief form to get this done? Is that a, uh, is that a tactical uh, possibility? I don't well, think so, but I'll defer to the chairman on that. <laughs> no, uh, I, 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 the senator had some, summed it up in a, in a sentence. Uh, the, the state, uh, our lawmaking doesn't work like Washington. Uh, bills, you know, it's, it's not often that you, you tie those in. Uh, there was actually talk, and Anthony was ground zero with the governor's office on maybe an executive order of some kind to, to, do, to, to, to do some movement. Uh, so, uh, you know, our, our, our lawmaking apparatus is a little different than the federal guys, and we're probably better for it. Uh, so this, this is a, in large part, a standalone issue. Uh, it's a legacy issue. It's an issue we're capable of doing if we decide we want to do it. Uh, and I tell you, we're, not, we're, we're, closer, we're closer than we were when we started talking about this six, seven, eight years ago. Thank you. Um, another question out there, it's, it's, it's a little, it's not on topic with the bills, your bills, but um, are uh, brewery licenses included in any of this uh, new reform that you're looking at or in how are we going to address those? We do have, we have a brewer, at least one on the, on the chat. Um, anyone? Uh, if, if I was going to see if they wanted to jump in first, but uh, here's the history on the, on, on the brew licenses. So you get a sense of how this works. That was a struggle that people didn't see all the details of. The restaurant industry was insane over the fact that this was going to happen. So the legislature in being able to bring all parties together and get the necessary votes uh, made, the, made the brewery licenses the way they were, absent of food. Now, keep in mind, we, we, we allowed a brewery license. We're selling alcoholic beverage and saying there shouldn't be food there. Uh, but that's how that ended up. So, so, you know, there was a sentiment among most who fought that battle that, look, everyone got into this knowing what the rules were at this moment. Uh, they need to evolve. There are a number of separate bills out there that, that help that evolve. My, I've been involved in a few. I think Vin may have. I just, I, it's hard to keep track. There's been so many. And we, and we did get some movement during this COVID time. Uh, to, to, to allow for, for some relaxations on these breweries. So that has to continue to evolve, but that's why that started the way it did. It was the only way we could bring it to life. And we thought it's better to bring, bring it to life and work to reform it as we go than not have it at all. But that, that's why it happened the way it happened. Yeah, I agree. It's not, not in the bill, as someone Bergen and I have, um, it, they're not in there, but there we have a number of other pieces uh, with actually Chairman Versicelli and others on uh, support for, for breweries, distilleries, uh, that entire industry. So definitely reach out to our office or any of the, any of the other two legislators here, and I'm sure we can share some of those bills. Some of them, we are having good luck moving some of them. And as uh, John just said, we moved some really, really good brewery bills during the height of COVID-19 uh, in, in the uh, spring. Thank you. Uh, so there, there are uh, some other questions. Um, coming up about the uh, Restaurant Association. And I, and I know from, we, we held a liquor license reform uh, chat during the League of Municipalities that uh, sen the Senator joined us on um, and that the Restaurant Association actually has, has shifted a bit. They, they were opposed to uh, past legislation and now they're, they're staying neutral because enough of their members um, are, are kind of saying, wait, we do want liquor license reform. And then they have another half of them that are saying, no, we don't want it. Um, are there any other strategic alliances um, that we see out there? Or if we want to discuss kind of how, how we work around some of the, the, the naysayers, we know the liquor license distributors are, are not in favor of this. Any thoughts on that from a strategy standpoint? Just one one piece on the restaurant associate Mary Lou uh, Halverson is a president is a constituent of mine and a, and a good friend and she's been really extraordinary these last few months on trying to neutralize uh, as many members she's in a, they're in a tough spot because as you said uh, Courtney half their members are for it the other half are against but I think just the fact and and I think the assembly can speak to it I believe historically they've always been opposed so the fact now that they're neutral and it's a huge membership I think is is uh, is beneficial. Yes. Uh, 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 the senator, the senator reads it correctly. Uh, as far as the distributors go, you talk about hypocrisy in this discussion. Uh, you know, the, 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 the three tier system we have, I think, works. But the distributors standing up and saying they don't want more people to sell their product to, I've always found to be very amusing. Uh, but you just it's very easy to read through that. They're just placating their existing customers by saying, look, we're standing up for you. We're standing up for you. Those guys, those guys are just, again, it's, it's hypocrisy. The, the distributors are gonna sell more product. 
even if it's just on the initial shipment. And we even had one stand up and say, well, we're going to have to hire more people because we're going to have to serve more accounts. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that sounds like business expansion. That doesn't sound like that doesn't sound like a great burden. You're not giving stuff away. Uh, but that's the kind of stuff that this discussion brings forward. And you have to sort through this. But on the wholesaler side, that's just a red herring as they try to placate their existing customers. As if their existing customers have somewhere else to go. You have to buy from an existing distributor. So there's not even competition in that side of the equation, which is a whole other discussion, which we're not taking on now because we're trying to win this one battle. This isn't even the war, folks. This is just a battle. Uh, frankly, the whole ABC should be overhauled. But that's, you know, the, we got to do one thing at a time. Right now, we got we got to make licenses, permits of some kind more readily available so business has a chance of surviving. Our down counts can, can have a better chance of flourishing and, uh, and, and people can have jobs. It's a pretty strong argument. Thank you. Um, uh, so I don't see any more questions. I was, I was actually frozen for a little while there, but uh, Mayor, I just wanted to jump to you really quick. Um, because a lot of the, the talk is about what can we do, what can locals do, and uh, there are some chatter from, from mayors who are doing resolutions and, and, and spreading the word. So if you could make a pitch to your fellow mayors um, about what they can and should be doing uh, before we wrap up here, I think that would be wonderful. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, in this times of uh, really economic um, uh, uncertainty when we don't know what's going to what's going to look like you know in April and I'm sure th this is a make or break um, few months for many of our independent restauranters and at the end of the day all you're going to end up finding is big chains who are able to afford the liquor licenses that are on the market so an absence of uh, liquor license reform that expands the ability to increase um, you know liquor license in our communities we're really at a loss for what more we can do and uh, this would be an incredible shot in the arm um, for the community and quite frankly, for additional investors, you know, I, I mean, it's a whole ecosystem. Uh, liquor license bring people, people shop in stores. It's not just we're talking about restaurants. It is a underpinning of the economy of many of our main streets in, this, in the state. So it has to be talked about in the context of not just liquor and, and license holders. It has to be talked about in the context of supporting an overall main street ecosystem that really is a differentiator and unique to, to, to the state of New Jersey. Um, and it's absurd. <laughs> When, I mean, when you talk about it and really listen to it, it's absurd on its surface that we can't figure this out. And I just, and I, I, I your notes are all appreciated. I think the groundswell of support, bipartisan support from municipality across the state to give those on the fence the courage to move this bill forward. Um, we're going to do that, and I'm going to make it. I, I was already texting folks. We've I've got an our uh, Valley Line Mayors Alliance that we're jumping on. We're going to get it. You know the L. LD, uh, LD7 Alliance or LD21 Alliance on this. So all over it and, uh, and whatever I can do to generate support for other mayors across the state will do. Yeah. Mayor Brindle, if I can just jump in on that. So um, I know Maplewood has uh, recently passed uh, um, uh, uh, committee woman Nancy Adams is on. They recently passed a resolution. We're going to be passing a resolution in South Orange. I think you'll be passing one early next year in Westfield and lots of towns should do that. But I just want to ask the assemblymen and uh, the senator, people are asking on the chat, the big thing is about timing. When, you know, obviously for, for the people on this, on this chat, this, this reform can't happen too soon. So what is your thought about timing? I, I like to see. I would like to see movement in first quarter of 2021. Uh, now, you know, I've gotten bills out of the assembly. A bill out of the assembly. Anthony, you have to. You have to help me with this. Or George Jacobs, of course, is in 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 the, in the uh, flow here. But uh, we may have moved it out of committee not once, but maybe twice. Uh, I, I, just, I just don't recall. Uh, and, uh, so uh, I, I'm thrilled that Vin is jumping in on the Senate side. Uh, because his relationship with the Senate president and leader and leadership in the Senate is uh, is an important one. Uh, so I think peace is coming together. Our assembly members are waiting to vote on something. They're waiting to vote on something. And Brian is evidence of that. And uh, and Brian, you know, I, I uh, you know, though we're not sitting in person, you know, whatever arrangements we strike, uh, I hope you will you'll you'll jump in and stay involved. Uh, I'd like to have you, uh, you know, in this mix as we finish. So I, I hope you'll you'll stay very engaged. And it's my intention to draw all the other assembly sponsors of the various bills into the mix as well. So uh, I'll say from my side, 
uh, I'm hoping first quarter 21, we move something. I happen to be a rookie assemblyman, so uh, I don't really have much say in, in uh, how things move, but the chairman does. So I'm going to default to him and just, uh, I'm just happy to be here in the presence of, this, of a lot of, uh, a lot of giants, the mayor, the senator, and the assembly person and, and a great business owner. So thank you for having me today. It was really, really a pleasure. I, I love it. And you have all of my young former army passion and energy behind this and just point me in the right direction and uh, keep all the China at bay because I might break it. <laughs> yeah, I, I would uh, just just add in as someone Bergen kind of uh, underscores uh, his value a little because we do need both parties. We need everybody and his presence here uh, is going to speak volumes. I know when he gets into caucus, when this bill comes to make sure his entire side is on the board. And I think it's going to speak volumes that this is bipartisan. Um, I, I hope it's soon. And, and our research again, and, and Chairman Bercicelli could speak just having been working on this for, for so many years, but the research our office has shown is this is the first ABC director we've had in a while who's been very receptive to this. This is the first governor's administration in a while who's been serious about trying to do something. And we have a Senate president and speaker who are both very receptive. So I think all those pieces are happening now. The, the time is it's hot to strike what that final version is, but we're going to push like heck. I know everybody to get this done ASAP the first half. Of course, the more noise everyone can make, the more resolutions, the more pushing, um, you know, reach out to reach out to your state senators, reach out to to uh, your assembly people. The noise has to be uh, as strong as possible and the pressure has to be the pressure I felt since the day I got to the Senate three years ago where I had mayors, a couple mayors and a couple council people who just kept asking me every three weeks, that's gotta happen across the state to every legislator. Oh, I, mean, I think I think that's absolutely right, Senator Gopal. And I, we need to wrap up because it's a little after one. But I, I really want to thank um, Anthony and uh, Mayor Brindle and Assemblyman Bergen, Assemblyman Bersicelli and Senator Gopal and George Constantino for this really terrific uh, session. There's a lot of work to be done and now is the time to do it. So please go to downtownnj.com. We have all of those resources at at our website, join the Alliance, get others to join, call your legislators, call other mayors and other council people. Let's make this happen in 2021 because we can't wait any longer. <laughs> so I wanna thank everybody again on the panel, thank all the attendees for, for, uh, for being here today and let's, let's work to make this happen. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Happy holidays. Thanks. Happy holidays and stay safe, everyone. Thank you.